Lift up your hand and worship that one who is the only friend that you have. The only friend that cannot fail. The only friend that loves you so much. God that loves you so much that gave the only begotten son that he will come for the purpose of remission of your sin and to make your waiting season to be over. Give him praise in the house. Give him worship in the house. We thank you, Father, for your goodness and your kindness, for your faithfulness that made you live the best that you have, the only begotten son that you have to come to this sinful world because of you and I and to die as a sacrifice. We thank you, Jesus, for accepting to come, living your kingdom in glory where everything is perfect. You came to this sinful world and you gave your life for me. Even when I was not your friend, the Bible says, for while we are yet sinners, Jesus died for us. The Bible says there is no love that is greater than this, that a man will give his life as a ransom for his friends. We thank you. As we celebrate your birth, we celebrate the beginning and the ending of waiting in our lives. We begin to celebrate the destiny that you have given concerning us that they will begin to speak from now on. Thank you, our Father. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. And so, Father, this morning we thank you. We're just grateful unto you. We saw the beginning of this year in January 2015. You took us to the second month of February. March, we march over. April was good. June was beautiful. November was awesome. We are here in December, the last month. Standing over our enemies, stepping over them with hope for tomorrow. Be glorified in the name of Jesus. This is the last Sunday of the year 2015. We are grateful that we have seen the last Sunday. This Sunday did not see our ending. Many has gone under the bridge. Many have died under Boko Haram. Many have died in accidents. Lord, but you have preserved us. We are grateful unto you. Be glorified in the name of Jesus. We want to thank you for our children. The children in this church, Victory House, you did not allow us to bury any of our children. To you be praised in the name of Jesus. Even when they are so careless, eating from the ground, touching their hands on the ground, and yet no affliction whatsoever, no accident whatsoever. As they keep jumping up and down, you keep saving them by your angels. To you be glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you for their teachers. All year round you have kept, we have not lost any teacher in our classes. To you be glory in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the teenagers. The teenagers who are neither here nor there. They are neither adults nor children. It's a precarious period. They want to try everything out. But we thank you for the life of our teenagers. That they are in you. Be glorified in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the adults. Thank you for our women, our wives. Thank you for our mothers. Be glorified over them in Jesus' name. To have kept all our mothers throughout the year, we are grateful unto you. What about our fathers who go out there to work and come home, bringing resources for the home? Thank you for their going out. Thank you for their coming in. Thank you you have kept them this one whole year. To you be the glory in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the elders in the house. Thank you because, oh Lord, oh, thank you for elders. Because without elders in the house, they are for wisdom. Thank you for their guidance of, of, of the church. Thank you for their counsel of the church. Be glorified in Jesus' name. We thank you for the ministers. We thank you for the workers in the vineyard that have not tired all these 12 months. And you have given strength to be standing and to be working for you. Be glorified in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the pastors. We thank you, our Lord and our God, that, Lord, you have kept them. This, we have never, no pastor has died in this church. No minister have died in this church. No minister have been incapacitated. They have not been incarcerated. They are going out. They are coming back. They are traveling. They are coming back. To you bear the glory in the name of Jesus.
Today, your church is happy. We are in Thanksgiving. Every day is Thanksgiving as far as we are concerned. Because every day you do good things unto us. The church, in your presence this morning, all well dressed up, looking fantastic, mundo. We give you praise, O oh God. The joy of today will last to the end of this year. And will take us to the beginning of next year. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I prophesy to everyone who is at the voice, at my voice, listening to us or looking at the altar at this point in time. You have entered 2016. You will not die. You will not bury anyone in your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. All those who say you will not enter 2016, you will not see them there. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we have victory at last. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All of you clapping, it is well with you. It is well with your family. Your hands will never go weary. It will not go weak. With your hands, you will count millions. In 2016, you will count millions. You will carry your children. You will carry your grandchildren. With these hands that you're clapping for Jesus, it shall be so. Your hand will be upon the enemy. Always in 2000, your hand will be upon your enemy. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Be seated in his wonderful presence. Slap the person next to you. Give a high five. Say, hi, neighbor. Hi, neighbor. Sing with me. Victory at last. I made it at last. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's such a joy to see the church looking very radiant again today. Um, I bless the name of the Lord for all he has done since January till December. And I know that the grace that brought us thus far will take us to the 31st. When people stand to say, Happy New Year, you will be standing. I said you will be standing in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. We started the month with victory at last. We are ending the month with victory at last. As usual, again we see that the theme that God gives to our Father and the Lord, the General Overseer, is always in consonance with the theme that God has given to us. This month, let's go fishing. The theme is peace that surpasses peace that surpasses. After the victory has been won, what do you have? Peace that surpasses. And that's what daddy preached about all through the Let's Go Fishing. And I don't know how many of you were at the police college on Saturday. Let me see your beautiful hands. Oh my God. One, two. Oh. Those who came, tell those who didn't come, sorry. Yo. Because the daddy comes around of the year with us every let's go fishing in December. And he comes and he pours blessings upon the, his children. And we, as members of the firstborn family, were supposed to be at the police college on, the, on, on, on the Saturday for the general of Asia to bless us. Anyway, I received sufficient blessings um, for me and for you, and I transfer it to you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Well, let me just give you in three minutes what Daddy said so that you can begin to connect it with the theme that God has given to us this month. Daddy says, peace that surpasses he took his text from Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, verse 7. Philippians 4, 7. 
He says, and the peace of God that passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and mind through Jesus Christ. And this is the season that Jesus Christ was born. And I pray for you again that the peace that Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace brought, will abide with you throughout this new year in the name of Jesus Christ. That is said, there are four categories of peace. Four categories of peace. One, he says there's a state of peace when there's no war. No war. Kosogun, no war. You have peace. Two, he says there is also a state of peace in which there was war. But the war has been won. And you now have victory at last. He says the third peace is the peace that you receive when there is no storm. E.g. E.g. When there is no storm. And he says there is also the peace, the fourth one, that you receive after the storms have come. And Jesus has spoken peace to the storm. And then you come out with victory at last. We see the connect between the theme of General Levasia for the Let's Go Fishing and what God has given to us since the beginning of December. Very briefly, he focused on the first peace that you get when there is war and when the war is won. He said, for example, in 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 24 to 25. In 1 Kings chapter 4, verses 24 to 25. He says, that is the peace that you have when there is no war at all. No war at all. 1 Kings, are you there, 24? Okay. It says, for we, he had, talking about Solomon, the father had fought all the wars that would be fought on his behalf and had won the victory. The man just came, no war. For he had dominion over all the region on this side of the river, from Tipsha even to Azza, over all the kings on this side of the river. And he had peace on how many sides? All sides round about him. All the years of Solomon, no war. Because someone had fought the battles and he operated in victory. I pray for someone, as you move into this new year, 2016, every war that you need to fight will be settled this year. As you move into 2016, your song will be victory in the name of Jesus. Number two, he says, you will have victory at last also when all enemies have been paralyzed. They are not dead. They are there, but they are paralyzed. They are just looking at you, anya, anya. So that's the experience of David in Psalm 23, verse 5. Psalm 23, verse 5. David said, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my They are there, but they are just looking. They are paralyzed. They want to move, they cannot move. They want to speak, they cannot speak. They are dead while they are alive. I want to pray for you. That every enemy that is going to bring rumble into your family, that wants to bring pandemonium into your family, they shall be paralyzed. In the name of Jesus. He says it's like the corn in the bottle that the hen sees. He wants to eat it. He keeps pecking. 
the bottle. Can he get the corn? No. Continue to peck until the beak is broken. That mouth, where did they take talk about you badly? God will damage that mouth. There's a song about that. I say, Shemini ko shemu baba. Shemini ko shemu baba. Agbado inu igo. Oda wo moju fe diye. Shemini ko shemu. And that's what God will do for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number three. You can have physical peace. But war inside your body. People that see you, look at you, dress radiantly, looking gorgeous, smiling, but inside of you, there is wahala. That's another kind of peace. For example, Naaman was a great man, honorable man. The Bible said, but he was a leper. A great man, a ruler in the country, he had leprosy. They had to use cloth to cover his hands and cover his legs. Ordinarily, the thing he has peace, but inside, no, there was war. But there was a day that he met the God that can heal. And God healed him in a miraculous way such that he had peace all over, both outside and inside. I speak to this person who is here this morning. People see you and they say, oh, what a beautiful lady. Oh, what a beautiful man. What a handsome man. But inside of you, you are dying slowly. Your heart has problems. Your kidney has problems. Your liver has problems. But outside, you look good. You have come in the presence of the one called Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. In a month where he has given us the theme, victory at last. Every sickness in your body, I curse the root of that sickness. I command it to die in the name of Jesus. To die in the name of Jesus. As you walk out of this auditorium, you will not walk out with that sickness. You will leave that sickness as you go out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lastly, the fourth example of peace is the peace that you have when you come out and people see you, you're looking radiant, you're looking beautiful. They say, hi, you say, it's, oh, what's up, man? It's good, man. But at home, there's war. As you're leaving church, your heart is pounding. Pa, pa, pa. Hey, I'm going to that house again. I'm going to that house again. People have peace when they come out, but at home, they're fighting battles. It could be battles with children who are recalcitrant. A child that is waiting at home to say, Mommy, please come back home quickly. I need, I need 20,000 naira. For what? Nothing. To go and smoke and drink with his friends. And you're like, God, what would I do with a child like this? After collecting 20,000 today, next week he's still going to collect again from you. Collect it more than you can have. And if you don't give it to him, he's, he's beating you black and blue. You don't want to go home because of this kind of children. Are you looking good but at home you have a spouse that is a tiger. Before you get home, where are you coming from? Did you make any food? Ba, ba, ba. Every time you become a punching bag. But outside, you look dressed up and you look cool. And they say, hey, baby, you look cool. Yeah, you look cool. But if they go home with you, they will know you ain't cool. 
Is that your situation this morning? Are you looking good outside? But really and truly, if they ask you for 1,000 naira, you, you're like, man, <laughs> no, I don't have any such money. Ah, oh boy, ah, as you touch so, ah, 1,000 naira. But the truth is that you don't have 1,000 naira. You're financially bankrupt. They're fighting the battle with your finances. Trying to pay fees, trying to pay rent, trying to pay this. Trying... The bills are more than you can afford. You look good, all right, yeah. But you're sick in the pocket. Where else are you dealing with a, a spouse, spouse infidelity? Spouse infidelity. You're not in a hurry to go home anyway because he's not going to be home. Even if you attend all the programs in church, even if they have night vigil, attend it, by the time after night vigil you get home, he's not even there. Abioto, it's better for me to be outside. Let me stay in church. The guy is gone, gone off with some, you know, um, or they are abandoned, you know. Is that what you're dealing with? Are you dealing with your career? You're looking good, but you don't, you don't wish Monday to come or Tuesday to come because, hey, that boss, I mean, he, this is just, the, it's a devil. Harass you. That's what we're looking at. That because you must have victory and there must be peace all around. Every internal war that you are fighting right now, whether it's in your finances or with your children or your spouse or your career, wherever that war is, that people cannot see on your face as we speak, the host of heavens will locate your home. The cause of that riot, that pandemonium will be destroyed before you get home. You will not carry them over to 2016. In the name of Jesus Christ. But that's why Jesus Christ came as we celebrated on the 25th. Jesus Christ came. The purpose for which he has come has been defined. All of these wars, they're caused by the devil. The devil was the, the, what was the, the, uh, the author of evil. The author of war is the devil. And that's why the Bible says in 1 John 3, 8. 1 John 3, 8. In this season, and that will be your testimony. Is that he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning before man. He is the one that started sin. Now see the consolation. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might do what? Destroy the works of the devil. Every work of the devil operating in your life and in your marriage, over your children, over your career, they stand destroyed in the name of Jesus. I said they are destroyed in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. I just want to give you only one example. There are several examples of wars. But I'll just give you an example of one man who started his life fighting war and ended his life fighting the war. But before he passed on, God gave him victory. That's why I don't care how many wars that you have fought and how many wars you still need to fight before the end of this year. I don't care how many. I only know that by December 31st, when 2015 will expire, your war will expire. In the name of Jesus Christ. David, just, just David alone. Just David alone for the, the time and then we'll pray. In 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 33 to 50. 
Second Samuel chapter number 22 and verse 33 to 50 is a testimony of David. And I would want the church to together read this testimony because that will be your testimony at the end of this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are we ready? Let's read together because you are appropriating it to yourself. It was a testimony of David. If God did it for David, he will do it for you also. Now let's go. One to go. God is my strength and power. And he maketh my way. It must be perfect. He maketh my feet like hind's feet. And set me upon my high places. He teacheth my hand to so that a bow of steel is broken. That will be your testimony. God has also given me the shield of my salvation and his gentleness. You will be great in 2016. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me so that my feet did not. You will not sleep in 2016. I have pursued my enemies and destroyed them and turned not again until I had until all your enemies physical, spiritual, emotional, economical, financial, they will be destroyed in the name of Jesus. And I have consumed them and wounded them that they could not arise. Yea, they are falling under. Even in your dream, all those who attack you in the dream, all those who want to destroy you in the dream, you will destroy them. You will see them no more. In the name of Jesus. He continues to say, For thou hast girded me with strength to battle that rose up against me. Thou hast subdued them under me. Receive strength for the battle in the name of Jesus. You will not be tired. It is the enemy that will be tired. In the name of Jesus. He continues. Thou hast also given me the neck of my enemies. That I might destroy them. All those who hate you. God will hate them. They shall be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. He said they looked. But there was none to save them. Even the Lord. He did not answer them. From now on. Every altar from which they cry against your name and your family name, God will not answer. Every request of your enemy, they will enter voicemail. In the name of Jesus. David continues, Then did I beat them as small as the dust of the earth. I did stamp them as the mayor of the street and did spread them abroad. They will not only be, even, even if they go to Togo, they will carry that, that thing on them. This, this curse that is upon them now, whether they go to Ouagadougou, they will go without it. They will not escape in the name of Jesus Christ. Again, he says, Thou also hast delivered me from the striving of my people. Thou hast kept me to be head of the heathen. A people which I knew not, they will serve you. In 2016, your enemy will serve you. In 2016, what you don't qualify for, they will give it to you. In the name of Jesus, no struggling, no more suffering in 2016. In the name of Jesus. Verse 45. Is a strangers shall submit themselves unto me. As soon as they hear, they shall be obedient. Listen, everything that God has not created with you is a stranger. 
Did he create sickness with you? No. Stranger is a strange. I mean, sickness is a strange. Did God create poverty with you? No. The Garden of Eden was full of everything. Therefore, poverty is a did he create barrenness with you? No. He says, none shall be barren amongst my people. Therefore, barrenness is a... I speak into your tongue now as I sanctify it. Because you said that strangers, poverty, barrenness, strangers, you said they shall fade away. They will fade away. From now on, they will be afraid of you. They will run out of their clothes. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 46. Strangers shall fade away. And they shall be afraid out of their closed places. Verse 47. Um, he began to sing a song. 47 was a song. Give us 47, sir. The Lord liveth, blessed be my rock, let the rock of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, blessed be the rock, let the rock of my salvation be exalted. Now that will be your song in 2016. God will give you victory at last in the name of Jesus. Now how did he come to this testimony? People who read it will be wondering, ah, what, what kind of song is this? He's talking about all those who rose up against him and how God girded him with strength and gave him the power to overcome. And at last, he had victory. I'll just give you a few of the problems that this man went through. And if this is your own story, when I pray after each of the problems, I would want your amen to be very loud if it concerns you. Look at the problem of this man in the beginning. First Samuel chapter 17 Verse 36 and 37. For Samuel 17, 36 and 37. We, the, we, we, we heard that this, the father of David had seven sons. And all the others, they did well. They were in the army as captains and generals. He, the last one, was the only one that was not trained as it were. They put him in the bush. To look after the sheep of the family. He was an underdog. He resigned himself to faith. He didn't argue. He didn't complain. But look at what went after him. The devil still was not satisfied that David was an underdog. He was not satisfied that he was just suffering in the bush. Look at what the, the devil did. The devil sent a lion after an innocent boy, thy servant slew both the lion. After the lion, the bear came again against an innocent boy. All the others are in town enjoying. This underdog had to fight battles, wars. The bear came with a bear hug to kill him. But God, that's why he said that the Lord strengthened his hand. Made his hand like iron. I slew both the lion and I slew the bear. I prophesy into your life as you move into 2016. Even if you are an underdog. Even if you have no helper at all. God will send help unto you. In 2016, every lion that rises up against you they will die in the name of Jesus. Every bear that wants to kill you with a bear hug, God will destroy. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Then came an opportunity. 
For David to be anointed king, look at it, from the back of the desert to be anointed king. The devil, again, from the beginning we said the devil had been there. That's, the, that's our no, chief enemy. The devil came and decided that that's uh, anointing for the throne that he will not get it. Anointing as a th- for the throne, he will not get. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 10 to 11. You'll find that there. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 10 to 11. When the man of God got to this house, Samuel got to the house of Eli. And there's a king in this place. Oh, of course, the father was happy. He brought out the good guys, the ones he trained, the soldiers, the captains, the generals. He was bringing them one by one. But do you know, as the, even the man of God himself almost made a mistake to think that, yes, they brought El- Eliab, the firstborn, looking six foot four, biceps, triceps, looking cool. The guy stepped out. Or oh, but today, God told Samuel, tell him, say, no be you, Joe. No be you, Joe. Eliab passed. Shama came, also looking, you know, broad shoulders. Shama came. The father said, oh, no, na Shama. God said, na lie. No be you. Shama passed. Abinadab came, looking, you know, swag, you know, swag. Uh, God says, uh, na swag with the look. So no be, so, I beg, no be you, Joe. Do you know that they tested all the male children? The father did not remember that there is one in the bush. They forgot him. All of you who have been forgotten, it looks as if they have forgotten you. In 2016, you will be the first God will remember. In the name of Jesus. The Samuel asked the father, ah, God spoke that there's a king here. No more children. He said, ah, these are the one. <laughs> the devil moved his father also not to believe that it could be him. The thing said, no, if it be you, but now you, Biko. I said, now you, Biko. He said, there's one small one. It's an underdog. Now it's a bush. Now they look after the animal. Samuel said, go and bring him. All of you, when you get swag on your feet, you are not going to sit down at attention until this small boy come. They all stood, including the, the Samuel old man, until the guy came. As the guy came, the anointing oil that refused to flow on Eliab, refused to flow on Shama, refused to flow on Abinadab, as David just kneeled down like this, before they talk, the oil, bah, 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 bah. your head will not reject anointing. Throughout 2016, your head will not reject anointing. When good things they come in 2016, your head go receive a they shall crown you. You shall be celebrated. You shall jubilate. In the name of Jesus. Every single in the house next year, you will greet the altar. Every power stopping you will somersault. In the name of Jesus. Next year, your first million is going to hit your bank account. God will promote you. In the name of Jesus. If you believe in Sabbath, amen. The powers that stood against him to be anointed was he also had victory over those powers. They anointed him king. That's second. Number three. He saw the throne. But to get the anchor, there was a Goliath. The devil brought Goliath again and said, Hey, <laughs> Goliath, you are big. You are tall. You have experience. Kill him. So that he wouldn't get there. The guy fought again another war with Goliath. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 45 to 49. First Samuel 17, 45 to 49. He fought another war against Goliath. Then said David to the Philistine, that's Goliath, thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, 
the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Look at prophetic word, so that you can take prophecy seriously. We make a lot of prophetic statements from this altar. Look at what he says. He says, this day, which day? Yeah. Which day will your own happen? Yeah. Which day will your Goliath die? Yeah. Tomorrow? Yeah. Next year? Yeah. 2017? The man said, this day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, small boy, and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee and will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistine this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth and that all the earth may know that there is a God in victory house. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. He says, and all the assembly shall know that the Lord saved not with sword, not with spear, for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into my hands. He's saying that I won't even fight any war. God will just put you in my hand. I prophesy. Throughout 2016, God will give you victory without a fight. Victory without a fight. Promotion without struggle. Appointment without struggle. Visa without struggle. In the name of Jesus. Third battle, he would have thought that after fighting the Goliath, that would be the end. No, it was not the end. He moved into the fourth battle. He fought against the powers of Saul. Saul that says David may see the throne, but his hands will not taste it. First Samuel chapter 18, verse 11. First Samuel chapter 18, verse 11. Saul was the king. God has rejected him as king and decided to reappoint David. But Saul said, that is the matter between you and God. Now God appoint you. That's your own business. Right here, physically, I'm on the throne. And uh, <laughs> there is no two kings in one palace. Obameji. He's laughing. So he said, since I'm here, you can never be king. And he tried many ways to kill David so that he does not get to the throne. Look at what he did. And Saul cast the javelin. For he said, I will smite David even to the world with it. And David avoided out of his presence. How many times? David was singing for him to be well. I said the man is, is not well. Told, true, true. Took a javelin. Aim at David. Just to kill him so that the destiny that God had prepared for him will perish. But David innocently, innocently singing for the man. Oh, <laughs> was just singing glory be to God in the highest eh? hallelujah glory be to God in the highest eh? hallelujah for his mercies and your forever eh? hallelujah for his mercies and your forever do you know what happened the man was he did it, David didn't know he put the spear behind Javelin behind. As David was singing and moving, singing and moving, he aimed at him with the javelin. But as he set the javelin, David just danced away like this. Glory be to God in the highest. When he said the second one again, hey, glory be to God. Arrow, arrow. I prophesy to your life. Every arrow from the enemy into your life into your marriage to destroy your children your family they will fail they will fail in the name of Jesus this underscores the importance of dancing when you are praising thanksgiving some of you when they are praising God my God is good welly welly he good welly welly Igudo, welly welly, igudo, welly welly. Uh, your God is good, welly welly. Your leg, you know, if you dance. See old women, 
see mama, I they see mama, I see them here. Elders, they go come out like this, they take their leg, they dance for God. See, no wonder, see, see how strong they are. At going to almost 80, they are strong. Your own, your, you are a young woman, your leg strong. My God is good though. Welly, welly, good though. Welly, welly. When they say shout hallelujah. 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 You know, use your mouth, shout hallelujah for God. What do you want to take your mouth, shout? But when or can I want to jam you? Hey! <laughs> Tell your neighbor from today. During praise and worship. Dance welly welly. And God will bless you welly welly. In Jesus name. Saul failed. David saw the end of King Saul. David saw the end of King Saul because he was a praised person. 2 Samuel chapter 1 verse 2 to 4. 2 Samuel chapter 2 verse 1. 2 Samuel chapter 1 verse 2 to 4. It came to pass on the third day that behold, a man came out of the camp from Saul. Which day? It came to pass on the what? On the third day. That behold, a man came out of the camp from Saul with his clothes rent and earth upon his head. And so it was when he came to David that he fell to the earth and did obeisance. It came, go on now. And David said unto him, from whence cometh thou? And he said unto him, Out of the camp of Israel am I escaped. And David said unto him, How went the battle? How went the matter? How far? How far? I pray thee, tell me, tell me. And he answered, That the people are fled from the battle. And many of the people also, they are falling and are what? And are dead. And saw, And saw, the stubborn pursuer, the one that says that David will not get to the throne, the one that took a javelin and said, I will kill you two times. And Saul and Jonathan, who would have struggled for the throne after his father, both of them are what? Everyone that says you will not get to your destiny. Anyone that says that promotion, you know, go get them. Before you enter office on Tuesday, Holy Ghost fire, remove them. Those who say you don't go marry, and eh, because you don't come from their state, because you don't be Yoruba, or you don't be Hausa, or you don't be Igbo, those who say, eh, because you are a Christian, they don't want you. Oh Lord God, that death will solve, He will deal with them in the name of Jesus. He saw the end of Saul. In verse 3, what did he say? In, 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 uh, okay, okay, all right. Now, David began to sing a song. The song you find that in 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 23. 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 23 is called the song of David. I don't know the tune, but the, the Bible says it's a, it's a song. He was singing, he says, Saul and Jonathan, they were lovely and pleasant in their lives and in their death. They were not even divided. They were swifter than what? Eagles. And they were stronger than what? But they died. Hello? They were swifter than the eagle. They can move. Before you know, they have cornered you. Swifter than the eagles. Stronger than the lion. But they died. I prophesy. It doesn't matter how swift your enemy is. It doesn't matter how strong they are. Let them belong to Ogboni fraternity. Let them belong to the witchcraft that comes from, from where? Which country? They say it's my own, a big. Wherever that they are coming from, they will die. If they attempt you or your children, they will die. In the name of Jesus. My wife prayed during the workers, uh, you know, meeting this morning that because of the revelation that she saw, 
that some people want to use some of our children as sacrifice. See, they, they want to sacrifice to this their God, godless God. So they are looking for people to sacrifice. She woke up in that dream and said, the only sacrifice that's allowed is Jesus Christ. And it's only one sacrifice. He has made that sacrifice. There is no other sacrifice. Not my children. Not me. Not my wife. Not my family. In the name above all names, every power and any power that wants to use you or your children as sacrifice, Holy Ghost fire, destroy them. Before December 31st, destroy them. You will not die. Your children will not die. You will not bury any of your children. They will not bury you. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' name, I decree. He sang a song, 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 27. Verse 27. He says, how are the mighty falling and the weapons of war? How are the mighty? I say, I don't care what level that they are. They may be the capoon. They may be the chief of the witches. It doesn't matter what level that they are. They may be mighty men in the evil, in the coven. They will fall. They will fall. He said, and their weapon destroyed. Let me tell you, until the weapon of the mighty man is destroyed, you are not free yet. That's why before December 31st, every weapon that the enemy is using against you, Holy Ghost fire, burn them to ashes. Destroy them. In the name of Jesus. After today, when they call that power, you know, go answer again. Somebody says a lie. That the Jew last month say it's a lie. Every power of the enemy is a lie. Every incantation against you is a lie. In the name of Jesus. Lastly, because of my time, lastly, one just one more enemy. This one is now household enemy household enemy even Jesus Christ himself says that a man's enemies are of his household unless that the thing inside job if people your brothers and sisters if they don't compromise you they can't get you from outside because they don't know your name your names they don't know the name of your mother. When you go to them, those Babala, they will ask you, what is the name of his mother? Because now your mama ain't carry you. The cord was linked between you and your mother. There is still that link there. The bonding is between you and your mother. They go ask, what will be the name when they call you? Not be the one when, uh, the, the name when they call me now for my village now, you don't know him. The name where you call Austin. If you go give Babala with Austin, you no go work. <laughs> but if you call the, <laughs> I don't go tell you. I don't, I don't know which one of them they here now. As I they bounce like this now at sixty-seven, maybe no go go use my name. But hello, hello, everywhere that they mention your name or the name of your children, Holy Ghost fire. You go just like brrrr. In the name of Jesus. Household enemy. As I close. Second Samuel chapter 15. Verse 13 to 14. Household enemy. After David has become king. They say he will not finish his term. That he will not finish his term. They want to remove him before his term. You marry, you sign for better for worse, till death do you part. One family can't say, eh, we don't stand, you, you go pack your load, pack your load, come on, pack your load. Uh, your time never finish, till death do us part, your husband never die, how you go pack? Your wife never die, how you go pack? They want to terminate it before time is a lie. Now them go go. 
I said, I didn't go go. I quit you. Laye, let me hear me. Let me hear me. Second Samuel. Are you giving me 15, 13 to 14? Second Samuel 15, 13 to 14. The son of this man, handsome guy. They say the hair long, reaching waist like this. His name is Absalom. Fine boy. Can say, oh boy, I tell him, Papa, it's time now. The one you do, don't, don't do. Make you come on, make myself chop now. Ah, waiting will remain when you don't chop everything finish. Like the king of the queen of England now. Don't they? They are all his children that don't do, pass the age of whatever. Now, grandchildren, I ain't go take over now. And the mama still did there. And there came a messenger and told King David, saying, The heart of the men of Israel are after Absalom. He don't take Kony Kony, take them away. Oh. And David said unto all his servants that were with him at Jerusalem, Arise, let us do what? Flee. For we shall not else escape from Absalom. Make speed to depart, lest he overtake us suddenly and bring evil upon us and smite the city with the edge of the sword. And the kings, they made ready, the man began to run. He ran for his son. But look at the end of the story. I'll cut off everything. End of the story. Look at Second Samuel 18, verse 15, 9 and 15. Second Samuel 18, verse 15. Uh, let's leave nine. I have three minutes to make my call. Verse 15. And ten young men that bear Joab's armor compassed about and smote Absalom and slew him. And, uh, and, slew him. and Joab blew the trumpet and the people returned from pursuing after Israel. For Joab held back the people. They took Absalom, cast him into a great pit in the wood, laid him a very great heap of stone upon him, and all Israel fled, and they left him there. Absalom would want to kill his papa before time. As he was riding on a horse, he rode under a tree. His long hair, that was his beauty, that long hair got, you know, with the, in the twig, just rolled by the twig. And the mool didn't know that anything happened. The mool was going and left the man hanging with his hair. They met him there. They killed him. Fine boy. Bobo, Bobo, Bobo. What do they call them now? He died. Household enemy. I don't care where they're coming from. Every household enemy, whether it's brother or cousin or sister or nephew or distant relation, no. That says you will not enter 2016. Holy Ghost fire! Destroy them. Destroy them. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. However, the only thing that worked for David, this miracle, was that he knew God. If you look at his, at his testimony, he kept saying that it was God that strengthened him. It was God that made his enemies come under his feet. He was God. He was God. He was God. Unless he knew God, he would have been, they would have sucked him in. You have prayed, you have prophesied. Are you in the house? You are going through wars. It looks as if there is peace outside, but there is a lot of war inside of you. You need the God who can deal with both external and internal wars. That's why you're here this morning. The Lord brought you so that you will know him. Because knowing him makes the whole difference. You had a testimony of a sister who came here and could not move her leg for five days. Did not come to church. And we went there and we prayed. Simple prayer. The next day, the husband was surprised. Husband had been carrying her on the back to the toilet for five days. The man was even tired. He just walked up to do the normal exercise and found the guy was the, the, the wife was working. Ah, uh -uh. kilo shere. 
Not that it, it went small, small, as if from lying down to getting up. Okay, I'm getting up small, small now. After three days, I can then move now. After another one week, I can move small, small. No! Question of hours. Because she cried and believed in God, God can win any kind of battle for you. You have to know him. Are you in the house this morning? My time is up. I have just one minute only. Rise on your feet. Rise on your feet. Like soldiers, rise on your feet like soldiers. Everybody rise on your feet. Everybody just rise on your feet. You are in the house this morning. You are going through wars that people don't know. They see you from external and they think that all is good. But you yourself know that there's a battle inside your body. On Thursday, after the, um, the service, after the um, Kalajai's, you know, um, hour of refreshing, they came to do tests here. And they brought the result to me. And I spotted one woman. The woman, the blood pressure, the diastolic and the, and the systolic pressure were the 223 over 111. 223. I asked them, is she still standing? They said she's standing. I said, bring her. The woman walked up. She's, she's almost going to 70. She walked up like this with blood pressure of 223. Anything could happen. And I said, look, straight 511, our clinic, go and put her there. She has to go and rest. Talk about drugs. You say drug. She doesn't take drugs. I say, which you will take this drug. No money. I say, there is money. Oh yeah, take money. Go and buy all the things and give her. I haven't had the report, but I know that she's walking. She looks good outside. But inside, the devil is trying to snuff the life out of her. You will never know what the devil is planning. But because she has God and she came to church, salvation. Are you in the house? You're fighting a battle that is not seen internal battle this morning I introduced Jesus Jehovah Rapha the one who in 1 Peter 2.24 says by my stripes you have been healed already the healing has been done already receive it as you come to Calvary you want me to pray with you you want to accept Christ into your life this morning you want to know him so that he can fight all the internal battles in the battles at your home with your marriage with your children with your finances this morning, let me see your hand. I want to pray with you as I leave here. I'm three minutes behind Shadow. I'm three minutes behind Shadow. God brought you because of today so that you enter the new year jumping and leaping for joy. Come and meet me here. Come and meet me here. Come and meet me here. Come and join me here. Join me here. Join me here. Join me here. You, li- you raise your hand, join me here. Nothing to be ashamed about. The devil is wicked. The devil does not want you to know God or to accept God. Just stand on your feet. Don't kneel down. Just stand on your feet. God bless you. God bless you. Come, 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 come. Come, come, come. Put the devil to shame today. You will not die, you will live. I can assure you. God on your side, you are a winner. David fought battle from childhood till he became old. The man ruled for 40 years and he fought for 40 years. Ogwaye, Ogwaye le o Jesu lo gbeja o, Ogwaye le Jesu agbeja o. Only Jesus can fight the battle for you. Come, battle in your home, battle in your marriage, battle in your business, battle over your career, battle over everything that you lay your hands upon. God can give you the victory. Come, come, come. Come, 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 come. The rest of you, lift up your hand and just thank God. And say, in 2016, every war that I have fought in 2015, you will not follow me to 2016. Tell God, tell God, tell God, tell God, tell God. More, 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 more. Don't let this time pass you by. You may never have another opportunity. You may be carrying time bomb inside of you and you don't know. Blood pressure of 212 is time bomb. It's time bomb. Come, come. You may not know, but Jesus knows. Jesus knows. Every war that you are fighting, 
He can win the war for you. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Jesus will help you. Jesus alone. Oh, tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Jesus will help you. Jesus alone. Come, 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 come. There are still ten of you that God has written down for salvation today. Ten. You are up there. There are five up there. There are five down here. God had determined that it is your day. This is your season. Five of you, you are up there. Come down now. Now, 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 now. Now. Come. Take that what belongs to you. It's your season. It's your season. You have backslidden. You want to come back? Come back. 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 Every battle you are fighting inside, God will settle it. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Now, God is not a joker. I'm, and I'm not a joker. The God does not waste words. And I'm not wasting words. I mean it that up here, there are five of you that God brought today because he wants you to move to the next level. You are up there. I haven't seen any. There are five of you up there. The, the boat is going to close and it's going to move. It doesn't really matter. It's your choice. I've seen five come from down. There are five from the top that God brought you today because he wants to win the battle for you. And you are standing there. Before I finish prayer, I want you to meet me down now. God is not a liar. I can lie, but God does not lie. There are five of you at the very least that God brought. You are supposed to be here. Ten all together. Father in heaven, I want to thank you. I give you praise because you are a faithful God. <laughs> There's a day in the life of a man when you turn things around for the better. Today is their day. Please accept them in the name of Jesus. Your promise is that you give them victory at last. With accepting you, they have received victory at last. As they enter 2016, let there be a manifestation. Oh, if there are going to be testimonies in 2016, let these ones be the first to testify. Thank you, Father. For the entire church, Lord Almighty, you have already prophesied unto their lives. You have prayed for them already. I believe you for manifestation in the name of Jesus. None of you will die. And you will not bury anyone in your family. 2016, I will find you here at the Thanksgiving in the name of Jesus Christ. Every impossibility in 2015 will end this year. They will not follow you to 2016. In the name of Jesus, there will be no carryover. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. All right, God bless you. You're welcome. Please give them a card. Where are the card people? Please give them a card. You may be seated at church. Uh, gentlemen, I want to congratulate you. And I want to thank God for your life. I want to thank God for your lives. The ending of a thing is better than the beginning. That's what the Bible says. Your ending is better than your January. And as you enter 2016, it's going to be a glorious day. I tell you, and I want to follow you up, personally, myself. That's why I want you to fill these forms. That form carries your name, your address. If you don't want us to know your address, you don't want us to visit you, no problem, don't put your address. But put your telephone number so that at least I can um, link you on the phone. If you have an um, 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 email, give me your email address. I can email you. Paradventure God is saying something to me and I need to communicate individually. I can communicate with you. So you will fill those forms. Prayer requests are on the forms also. The things you want God to do between now and 31st. Ask big thing. Don't ask small thing. Ask big, big thing that is incredible. Because we serve an incredible God. They will bring those forms back to us. I will look through it. Go through your prayer points. Pray along with you. Join my faith with yours. And I will call you to ask where you, if you have a testimony. But I believe God that you have a testimony. Therefore, you are going to go with my brother. Who is carrying the counselor board. He will go with you just for a few minutes. And uh, fill the forms. And then you bring you back here. You know, so that we can round off the service. Praise the name of the Lord. Right. It is the um, custom of the church to give 
um, four brand new Bibles to the first four people that answered the call of salvation. The first four. Yes, sir. One, one, sir. God bless you, sir. Yes, ma'am. God bless you, ma'am. Oh, God bless you, my, my daughter. God bless you, sir. All right? You are all blessed and you all have received gifts from God. The gift that money cannot buy. As you go with the counselors, the Lord will go with you and he will walk with you and I will hear your testimonies in Jesus' name. Church, let's jam our hands for Jesus. Jam our, please take your bag and your Bible because some thieves also come to church. Don't leave your bag. Don't leave your phone. Don't leave your phone. Take your bag. Take your Bible. Take your phone as you go.